Hello, Kota Alasha. Welcome to Kalata Plus. I want to start with an anecdote I've heard about you that in the early days of your career, uh, you used to announce backup by 6 o'clock and after 7 o'clock you won't touch your phone. Yeah. Uh, was that true? True. Right. Uh, because I don't want to mix my personal life and professional life. Right. I take too much stress in the day I do, and I don't want to take that back home. Now, but are you able to do that? It's last two weeks, it's day and night. Okay. That's it. But, but even now, as even with this kind of success, you're able to kind of switch off by 6 and 7. Obviously. Okay. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's really amazing. No, 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 I, no, no, I made it a point that this is how you should live. Otherwise, you'll be forced to change, which I don't want to. After Bharat Tani Nenu, it's been four years to get to Acharya. Yeah. Part of it is, of course, the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, was there any other reason uh, for the delay? Not exactly. Uh, so once I'm done with Bharat Tani Nenu, so I'm supposed to do a film with Chiru sir, mm, but he's uh, busy, uh, I mean, he's pretty occupied with Saira Narasimha Reddy. Right. And it got little delayed. So it's okay. So I was just waiting. So when we were about to start again, the pandemic came. Right. So it happened like that. So now it's four years now. Okay, that's, yeah. that's all it is. That's all. So how does, how does one approach uh, like Chir an actor like Chiranjeevi? Uh, like does he say, okay, who has a story for me and everybody goes and narrates a story? Or, or does Charan say, okay, Kortala Shiva has a story, dad, why don't you listen to it? How does it happen here? No, Chiru sir is one kind of a guy who loves scripts more actually. Okay. He's a script guy. He loves to listen to the scripts. I mean, uh, he doesn't care about the names. It's any any young director just can go and knock his door and, and just narrate a script. Lovely. So he's like that kind of a guy. But in my case, even uh, I think Charan and Chirusha discussed together. So let's make a film with uh, uh, Shiva. So I just got a call one day because I'm supposed to do a film with actually Charan. At the same time, Charan is occupied with Triple R. Right. He just told to Chirusha because I'm busy with Triple R. I don't want to leave him. So we can't do a film. And Chiru is very much interested also. So uh, one just uh, one meeting happened. So let's do a film together. So that's the only time. Generally, I write a script, and then and I go to the actors. Uh, Said I've got a script, but this is the first time. First time, I thought I should make a script for Chiru sir. So that's how the film is. What was the biggest challenge of transitioning from writer to director? But luckily, even when I was a writer, I used to think about, not about only the lines. Right. See, I strongly believe that this is a visual medium. So the visual should always, and the emotion should always dominate the dialogue. Right. So, but when I was a writer, you know, I got a free hand in writing. So I can write whatever I feel, because there's a director to censor that. And he can pick what is right and what is wrong. But here, and I and I am the writer and I am the director. So I should switch off my writer once the script is done. And then the director should wake up and he should filter. See all the bad <laughs> and he should take all the good. So this is a little challenging exercise, but which I love to do. So obviously, there are, it's two different worlds actually. Right. But I don't mix the writer and director. Okay. Once I am done with the script, when I'm writing, the director inside me will be completely in hibernation. Really? So you don't say long shot and you know... Never. Like, okay, okay. And even when narrating the script to any actor, I never say the shot. I just want to introduce my world to him, the story. my emotions to him, that's it. No shot, sir, now close, now we pan. There are no words like this. I never do. Okay. I just tell... See, when we were kids, you know, how our grandmas and uh, used to tell the stories. That's the way I narrate. I'm good at that. And if, luckily, all the actors love that. Right. So, you mentioned that that with uh, Chiranjeevi, you kind of, uh, you know, first time you wrote a story for him. Yeah. But uh, all, your, all your movies after you turned director have been with uh, big stars now. Uh, yeah. uh, Prabhas became a star with, uh, big star with Mirchi. Then you had Mahesh Babu uh, with uh, uh, Bharatani Nenu and Sri Mantru. And then Janta Garaj, NTR yeah. Junior. So, the, all your movies have been with big stars. Yeah. Can you, do you add a certain X factor that suits the big star's personality to the script that you already have? Or can the same script work for any star? No, the script, because generally I prefer 
larger than life stories right uh, because uh, i don't know why i'm i'm always inclined to them sure so larger than life so generally we have big stars we have too many stars yeah. here yeah so one uh, th that story can be catered to many actually yeah. but once the script is locked and i go to the actor see according to the actors you know body language and his image i change a little okay just the fine tuning will be little different right so for tarak a little bit aggression and for charan mahesh it's a different thing so i do the uh, uh, that that kind of things in the last minute right once the actor is on board was on board otherwise my story will shoot almost all the stars right so can you give me an example of this so you've written jantagaraj and now tarak's on board yeah w what can you mention one change that you did to uh, like in a scene that 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 to suit him generally uh, tarak you know is a little i don't say louder but he's little very hyper in most of his films and which is his strength to on a positive note right uh, but, but suddenly see when i uh, approach him for janta ka raj i said um uh, we'll change a little so we don't want that kind of for for a while so i said let's be little calm that's a game changer for him so he said okay let's give it a try so he's off screen also he's like that very expressive i just want to tone down that i just want to play with his eyes i don't want to lose that smile even when he's warning to the bad guys i just want to be very calm so once tarak is on board i said see this will be different for tarak so i approached him and he loved it and we did a proper exercise for that and it worked for him a lot first of all what is it like to write for a star that you've grown up watching <laughs> the biggest superstar our generation has seen is chirusho there are many stars but but the only star we knew while right. we were growing up is chirusho and i would say he is one kind of a star where you can't forget chirusher while watching the film right so generally we follow the character but he is the only one who will remind you that he is chirusher still because his impact is such on his fans it's like no no we are, we are unable to see chirusher it's only character it's not like that his image is much bigger you can't forget chirusher on even on screen so i know his strengths so uh, obviously i need a much bigger larger than life character for him and i need one different world for the film and i have done lots of i have put lots of effort for this film because i need to create a big script and and i need to work on his image too many factors running in my mind right and this is uh, a lifetime opportunity working with chirusha but everything fell in place were you a little scared in the sense that uh, for example let's take rajnikanth right getting to work with him is at once the biggest honor for a director but also the biggest terrifying thing for a director because you know fans are if you if you don't do the the film doesn't like yeah, yeah, cater yeah. then it becomes a little yeah. so was there a little bit of fear uh, or apprehension that's there always <laughs> but i'll try to keep it little away okay because uh, you, you can't even move your pen if you think about that so i thought no even i'm a bigger fan of stars so i thought even i am a fan so the fans will be on my side don't worry you can write <laughs> see i keep on saying it to myself so it's there but i try to you know cover that up always yeah but, right. but it happens yeah. every time but once the shoot is done then the real scare factor comes in says so everything right will it work for the fans so the last you know the one week is running in my mind but i hope it will what is the toughest thing about writing a commercial film that will work for all audiences i don't know why i can't make a very realistic film right because 
I always believe in larger than life characters. Because in South, see, we don't call them as actors, we call them as heroes. Yeah. See, the name itself implies that he's a hero. We need heroism, heroic acts. It's not like only the action sequences, but his thought process should be heroic. Right, right, right. So I believe in that. So it's always it's easy for me because I believe in that generally. I love to feel them as heroes only. See, they'll do good. There will be bigger evil. He'll fight against the evil. So I love this always. Right. So I try to make a new larger than life canvas always. Right. So once the backdrop and the main emotion is locked, that's it. Right. And it is, it's going to be a very smooth and joy ride for me. Right. See all the scenes. It will be in a flow for me. But but all the exercise I do is just get the emotion right. Get your universe right. Right. Period. Yeah. So, yeah. The, getting the universe right is the biggest challenge. Exactly. Okay. Okay. And the right emotion. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What is he fighting for? See, what is he? What's his emotional drama in the film? So that's the main points where I look after always. Now you worked as, as an assistant under your uncle Posni Krishnamurli. Yeah. What did that stint teach you? He's a very natural writer. You know, he'll be always in extempore. No filters. No sensors. See, he always feel that as a writer, don't control yourself. Okay. Just pour yourself out. So he believes that. And at times he crosses the line also, main scripts. But the, the main thing I learned from him is, he won't even bother whether this will work or not. Let the story go in a flow. And I took that mantra, which worked for me a lot. See, I don't see that if this works or not. If the emotion is going in a flow, let it be the same. Right. And it worked for me in many places. Now, when Bharat and Nenu, uh, there is this fantastic moment where uh, you show Mahesh Babu's swearing in ceremony yeah. and uh, he cannot uh, read Telugu. So he stumbles on, yeah. on a word yeah. and a reporter picks that up. True. And uh, then there is this exchange and, and then you know, he gets the, yeah, the, exactly. the last word. True. Uh, that is, uh, Mahesh Babu gets the final yeah. word and it's, it's a fantastic mass moment. True. H how, how do you think of these moments? I always focus in the rise of the character. Right. I just I don't want my character to be flat. Right. So let him fall, let him rise. So that's the thing I love always. So there should be a moment where he'll fall and he's like a common man. And then he'll try to emerge and then becomes my hero. So obviously in the political world, so I thought, see, out of nowhere, he'll be forced to become the chief minister. <laughs> Suddenly, out of nowhere, which is not his world at all. So I thought everybody should make fun of him. So what kind of a guy he is? He can't say a few lines. So I thought the fall is nice. And he don't care. But he loves that because, and I've established the character that he loves, he's a constant learner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he never hesitates to learn. So, so, so let me fall, what's there? And he loves the expression, I don't know. No, yeah. And his intro, and even, even I've made a song on that, which he celebrates the expression called as I don't know. Yeah. Because if I say I don't know, I can know. So he celebrates the expression of I don't know. So obviously, and once he comes to the political world, he is ready to accept that I don't know. And even the, all the IAS officers will be, you know, CM admitting to all the IAS officers, trust me, I don't know anything about this. See, they will be little, you know, see, how can they say that? Yeah. But trust me, I am a very fast learner. So that's the confidence in him. So I just want to show that in my scene also. It's not just through a dialogue. Yeah. See, so once he st it starts in the oath sermon itself. He can't say those lines. He can't say th he speak Telugu. So they'll make fun of him. And then he knows that that's antakarana suddhito, that word. And uh, see, and he starts doing all his things as a chief minister. He'll ask, how can you do this? And now he says antakarana suddhito. <laughs> 
So he meant that line and he meant that also. You see, in two ways. I can spell that and I am doing that actually now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I felt this is the best moment in the film. Even Mahesh Babu said that, said this is one of the biggest moments in my life. Yeah, it was true, true. very, very good. Now, one of the things about a commercial film is, is that you have to have uh, there's a heroine, there's, a, there's a, some songs, uh, some, you know, that kind of a stuff. But when you're talking about uh, a senior superstar, uh, a well-regarded uh, superstar like Chiranjeevi, you can't, you know, though that, that element has to kind of be dialed down. I, maybe yeah. you can show a flashback or something like that, yeah. but you can't suddenly have songs, romance, things like that and all that. Yeah. So how do you balance the audience's need for a certain kind of, you know, certain elements versus the fact that you can't do those things yeah. In a film like Acharya. Definitely. See, it should be taken care of. Otherwise, because I don't know, once he's into the world, you can't bring him out of the world. Yeah. See, because it will be tough again for the audience. It will be a, you know, very tough ride. Going in, going out. So, definitely, we need to take care of such things. But you know, uh, but he's one of the greatest, greatest dancers of our times. Yeah. But I can't avoid that. <laughs> So I'll see that there is a situation where it doesn't look awkward and it's very suitable to the occasion. So for example, this is the temple town in Acharya. So there is a place where one folktale group will come and sing a song on the goddess. So there is a chance for Chirusa to join that, uh, that village troop and shake his leg. Right. So this is the kind of access we need, we need to. Yeah. See, we need to satisfy our audiences, all his fans. At the same time, I, we shouldn't disturb my script and my world. Yeah. So that's the very tough exercise, and it need to be done always. What made you cast uh, Charan in the in the guest role or cameo or whatever it is? It's like uh, because initially there was news that Mahesh Babu was considered for it and all that, but you know what happened there? When I finished my script. And then this character called as Siddha. It's, it's one of the biggest characters in the film. And it's the soul of the film. So, there were multiple shades. So, I need a star. And there are little limitations because he need to be a Gurukul boy. See, it's a small temple town. So, he, he need to look like a Vedic school boy. So, the first image I got is Charan, obviously, because he looks like that. So, I immediately went to Chirusar and said that, Sir, please don't get shocked. And this is one important character in the film. Um, and I, I told him, he's in a dilemma. He was just blank for a while. So, I thought, he immediately smiled. See, I heard the script, it suits him well. But I don't want to recommend because he's my son. And this is a long time dream for my wife to see me and Sharon together. So, but I don't want to yeah. rub this on you. So you better, as a director, you go and approach Sharon, tell your script. If he's okay, then I'll be the happiest. So I went to Sharon and said that, see, this is the thing. He just heard the script and said that, Sir, it's not because that I should work with my dad. The character is very, very beautiful. It's haunting actually. And I feel that it's me in real life too. Lovely. So I should do. So everything worked for me, <laughs> really. Now, in all your films, you have Devi Sri Prasad as your music composer. Yeah. What is the special connect that you have? Devi, uh, because I started my career with Devi right. from Mirchi. He's one fantastic guy, highly energetic, and he's the son of a writer. So he understands the emotion right. Because he grew up uh, by listening to the stories, his father's works and everything. He's a legendary writer, his father. So somewhere I got connected. See, when I'm narrating, I know the high moments in the film. But there is no need for the music director to feel that this is high, oh, what a moment, what a line. But he shares the same excitement with me. So I feel that he is, he is one big writer. So the, we are in the best sync. He understands my script right. right. 
obviously our our journey was fantastic and every script he knows the exact moments where i feel the high why i made that why i wrote that so there is no need for me to check he understands my script right so obviously devi is the best choice for me <laughs> yeah at some point in your life are you afraid that you may fail I, i'm not afraid but but i'm prepared yeah yeah see obviously see you can't you can't avoid that but hopefully i'll put all my efforts yeah see there may be a day where i try something very very new and audiences couldn't take that right there could be definitely that moment but i see that i'll put all my efforts to see that because it's not that i'm not afraid of failure because there are lots of things i should look after my distributors there's a you know a lot of dynamics going on the producer trust me he puts a lot of money and now it's all about numbers and the film has gone so big movies now so i'll see that i don't experiment too much yeah. because if i want to experiment let me make a film a small like a small small film, film. Yeah. because for your desires see you can't crush some other's happiness yeah yeah which i'll take care of always your mother brought you up with a communist ideology are there traces of it in your films yeah uh, i i would say communism i'll say social responsibility right yeah because i hail from a communist family but i'll see that but it's not obvious say i'm not that see now this film I, again i should tell one issue. it's not it's in a flow right so i'll i love to tell it it's com- it's coming naturally so i i see that this idea will have a bigger reach commercially right otherwise i don't do any special exercise that come on let's uh, point out this issue uh, it's not that yeah i should get excited with the emotion right right but yes because of my because of my up- upbringing i make sure that it it comes naturally there's a little bit of an issue that 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 needs addressing true 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 yeah. your protagonists are usually very sophisticated people mm-hmm. Have you ever thought of writing rustic or rural people? I would love to, and I'm going to write it very soon. Okay, but I'll see that I'm not uh, uh, focused on whether uh, is it will sophisticated or rural. But I see that he's very strong, and he's got a different attitude. Yeah. and he's got a big heart right now i'm not saying it's wrong yeah I, i'm just saying it happened that way right? exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah yeah, yeah. So, no, i would love to yeah uh, and 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 i truly believe that's my forte actually which is yet to come but but very soon i'm going to make it very rustic right definitely it will happen and i would love to <laughs> yeah finally there's some fear in the film industry in certain film circles that the massive success of bahubali then rrr and then kgf2 hopefully acharya uh, will mean that that now heroes will only want to do a particular kind of larger than life movie uh, and that the smaller films will will find it very difficult to get thing and get crushed what are your thoughts on this yeah there is a talk about that and even um, uh, i was talking to some actors luckily they weren't carried away by that so they were saying that see, let's take film by film so some guys i after uh, just a couple of days ago one big star is saying that i just want to do a comedy film <laughs> which is nice yeah it's not like they get carried away but generally they'll follow the trends but i would say it's always good to follow the trend but there should be some checkpoints you know there will be a point where audience will f- feel boredom of that genre also right so it's not that luckily our stars are very sensible they know what to do and when and uh, they'll see that the emotions are right they won't get carried away with just genre right let's see that it's happening for good
right yeah yeah and when you did acharya uh, you only wanted to make it a telugu film you said i don't want to make a pan india film i never believed in that generally see um, that pan indian thing i never believed in that i just feel that if the boss is right it will reach to bigger audience right it will cross the boundaries that's it i didn't do any special exercise that let's put this to attract that language let's put this, this i won't do this forever i if the universe is right if the emotion is right definitely it will reach to all section of audience yeah. but uh, keeping many things in mind we don't have time just we plan for telugu right yeah, yeah. thank you sir thank you very much sir